most popular drink in Canada. On tonight's What's Eating Theo, Edmonton's connoisseurs of coffee steam us up an excellent brew. You know what's eating me? I'm not even awake yet, and I'm looking for the perfect cup of coffee. To have a perfect cup of coffee, you need to start with some gray green. This is green green coffee from Panama, actually. This coffee cost me $28 a pound. Let's, let's make up a pot. Coffee starts off in a cherry on a coffee tree, and they put the cherry, in this case, in water, let it ferment in a water bath, then they strip that pulp away, and we end up with the green coffee. Coffee is much like wine, in that there's a ter there is terroir. Ter terroir characteristic to coffee. Sure. Brazilians tend to be nutty a little bit chocolatey flavors, vanilla. Harars or Ethiopian coffees, uh, blueberries, citrus, spice notes, some oh, jasmine. Uh, Sumatra is uh, earthy, whiny, some dark fruits in it. And then the good, the year matters too, right? For the Ethiopian Harar, we roast that quite light because we want to accentuate the blueberry notes. Whereas with the Sumatra, we roast that darker because we want to get some more of the chocolatey notes out of sort of that more full body flavor. We're roasting the coffee for about 15 to 16 minutes. You've got to cool coffee down fast or it just bakes in its own juices. Just like wine, coffee has a flavor wheel. Some of the basic characteristics of coffee, some vocabulary, just like wine. So you're going to get some whiny, soury flavors in some, some sweet, mellow. Nippy. Nippy. Acid's good. Acid in coffee is important. If you don't have acid, you have bad coffee. At a light roast, acid's up here. As you roast, darker and darker and darker, acidity falls away, bitterness goes way up. That's why some coffee roasters that we're familiar with, they roast coffee really darkly, and that's why you get bitterness in the coffee. One of the best ways to make coffee, period, is the clover. The clover is uh, this fancy machine here. There's about 20 of them in all of Canada. This is the only one in Edmonton. It's about an $11,000 one cup at a time machine. It's sort of a cross between a French press and an espresso machine. Look at this. So up, yeah, so it's like a little now, it's, coffee now it's extracting, pouring it, pulling it down here. Smell the aromas, and then, uh... Mm. Oh, it's just, it's sweet and mm. subtle and delicious. Yeah, it's, it's awesome, eh? That is beautiful. What has more caffeine, light roast or dark roast? You know what, the reality is, dark roasts have a little bit more caffeine, but it's so, it's so negligible. It's not the roasting of the beans that matters, it's, it's the brewing, me brewing method that it determines how much caffeine ends up in the coffee. You want coffee fresh, within five to six days of it being roasted, so when, and that's what we try to do here at Transcend, put it in an airtight container, and fridges are terrible, so yeah. I think that's really important information for everybody. Grinding fresh is really important because when the, the you're in grinding right before you brew, all those aromatics that you want to, in, in, to experience in the coffee are still present. For amazing espresso, the machine matters. This is the, this is the Lamborghini of espresso machines. One of the most important things about espresso is proper brewing temperature, and we control the temperature of the water on this machine. It's actually set to 203.5 degrees. So even when making a latte, you want to make, it's still important to have a perfect shot of espresso, right? That's the foundation. So are you going to do some razzle-dazzle as well? I'm going to do a little bit of latte art here. Swirling! Fantastic. Creamy, rich, smooth. Paul, thank you so much for having me. It's been a the, pleasure. The best coffee I've ever had in my whole life. Cheers, anytime. I'm flying out of here today. <laughs> Oh, Theo's flying everywhere. He's so energetic, and we appreciate him taking us down to Transcend in this episode. They're located, by the way, 62nd Avenue and 98th Street. And uh, you can go to our website anytime, citytv.com, to see that episode again and get some more information on Transcend. And on next week's adventure, what do you get fed if you get sick? I mean, if you get sick and you have to go to the hospital. Well, Theo goes behind the scenes to taste what's cooking in hospital kitchens. That's next week. Do you know what a pterosaur is? Well, it's one of two new monsters set to take the stage at the Royal Terrell Museum in Drumheller. The other newbie.